All right, welcome to Unit 2, Exploring Two-Variable Data for AP Statistics. In this video, we are going to cover Topic 2.3, Statistics for Two Categorical Variables. So what we're going to look at here is how we could look at some numbers, right, statistics, data, information, a summary of what we see in a categorical variable table. All right, so first off, a couple terms here. First, marginal relative frequencies. Marginal relative frequencies are the row and column totals in a two-way table divided by the total for the entire table. So let's look at gender versus hair color. The marginal relative frequencies are nothing more than the totals for every single possible category that there is. All right. So we see that, um, for example, oh, sorry about that. Um, we have gender. So 41 are female. That's the counts, the frequency. But I want to know what proportion that is. So I just take 41 divided by 86, and I get 0.4767. For the males, that's going to be 45 divided by 86, 0.5233. So the reason why we call these marginal distributions is because these are the numbers that are in the margins, right? They're the numbers that are totaled up in the margins to the side. Margins are your top, bottom, left, right. So this is to the right. Um, and then in the bottom, we can also do the marginal relative frequencies for hair color. For example, 21 people had black hair. 21 80, out of 86 is 0.2442. Uh, 8 had blonde hair. 8 divided by 86 is 0 0.0930. 54 had brown hair. 54 out of 86 is 0 0.6279. And then 3 had red hair. 3 out of 86 is 0 0.0349. So um, all of these together are our marginal relative frequencies. So think about every single category you have. I got male category, I got female category, I got black hair, brown, uh, blonde hair, brown hair, red hair. Every single one of those categories has its own relative value. All you gotta do is divide by the total. So very simple. So if you ever see that word relative marginal frequencies, pretty simple. All right, then we also have what are called conditional relative frequencies. A conditional relative frequency is a relative frequency for a specific part of a two-way table. So remember, the word relative means proportions. This is a proportion or a percentage, but it's a very specific proportion or percentage. It's not just any single category. And this is a little bit tricky to explain, very easy to show. The most important thing that I have to say is that when you are describing a conditional relative frequency is proper wording on the proportion you are trying to find. So let's look at some examples here. All right, I actually got um, five different examples, and every one of these is a proportional relative conditional, right, a conditional frequency. So what proportion of all people have black hair? Okay, all people, black hair. So that's going to be 21 out of 86. Very, very easy. Right Now that's technically a marginal. So I started you off with a marginal one, but that's a marginal distribution because I got that 21 from the margin. All right, what proportion of females have black hair? Now this is conditional because it says of the females. So the condition is you got to be a female for me to even care about you for this question at least. So of the females, what proportion have black hair? So that means we're only going to look at the 41 females, of which nine have black hair. So that's nine out of 41. That's going to be the proportion. And you could do the division on your own to get a pr proportion or a percentage. I'm just going to show you the fraction. Because the fraction allows you to actually see where I'm getting these numbers from. So the key is there that we're talking about of the females. That's why the bottom is now 41. And I'm looking for, of those females, how many have black hair? Hence, nine out of 41. All right. What proportion of males have black hair? So this time it's another conditional of the males. So now I'm only allowed to look at the 45 males. So of those 45 males, how many of them have black hair? And that would be 12. So these are, again, conditional, right? So here the condition was all people, which really isn't a condition because that's everybody, all 86 people. Here the condition was you got to be a female. So I was only allowed to look at the 41 females. Here the condition was the males, of the males. So it's only allowed to look at the males. Now, the next one says, what proportion of blonde hair people? So now the, the, the condition is blonde hair people. So of the people with blonde hair, 
of the eight people with blonde hair, what proportion are male? So that's going to be five out of eight. The condition determines the bottom. The condition is you got to have blonde hair. So I'm only allowed to look at the eight people with blonde hair. Nobody else meets that condition. Of those eight people, how many are blonde? Or I'm sorry, how many are males? Five, five out of eight. That's the proportion. Let's do one more here. What proportion of black hair people are female? So again, here the condition is you got to have black hair. So how many people have black hair? 21. So I'm only looking out of those 21. Of those 21 people, now I'm going to look at the female, and that would be 9. So 9 out of 21. So these are conditional questions, conditional statements. Of the people with red hair, what proportion of female? Of the females, what proportion have red hair? So be very, very careful on that, right? So let's just do that one real quick here. So um, if I say, okay, I'm going to use red for red hair. Of the people with red hair, so that's three. How many of them are female? Two. So two-thirds. That's the proportion of the people with red hair that are female. If I said of the females, now I'm talking about the 41 females, what proportion have red hair? That's two out of 41. So in both of those, I'm talking about females with red hair. But the word of determines the condition. Of the people with red hair puts a three in the denominator. Of females puts a 41 in the denominator. So hopefully that's pretty easy to um, comprehend. Um, and there's conditionals all over the place, right? I could have, you know, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different possible conditions I could do because I could do of the males, red hair. Of the females, red hair. Of the brown hair people, red hair. You get the point. So those are conditional relative frequencies. All right. Now, is there an association? This is an absolutely enormous question for a lot of things that we're going to do this year. Using statistics from two-way tables is the perfect way to determine if there is an association between two categorical variables or not. And as always, most of my videos have some type of typos if there is an association. So let's start with the definition of an association because everything we've learned in this video so far is going to help us understand how to answer this question. So what is the definition of an association? Well, an association between two variables means that two variables are said to be associated if the outcome of one variable impacts the outcome of the second variable. Now, this is known as being not independent. Right? You guys know what independent means. Independent means that one thing does not impact the other. A does not impact B. So if A does impact B, if one thing does impact another thing, or if one variable does impact another variable, we become associated. It means that they are connected. So that's not independent. So that's what an association means. Two variables are said to be associated if the outcome of one impacts the outcome of the second. All right, here's an example of an association. Now remember, an association means not independent. All right, so we can check for an association by looking at conditional relative frequencies. That's why I spent so much time emphasizing what a conditional relative frequency was. So here's the example I'm going to use. Now, before I move on, don't ever use counts. Remember, counts are kind of bad to use because they could be misleading if your two groups have different sample sizes. So we like to use proportions to really hit home the point of if there is an association. So here's a, a really nice, simple example I just kind of made up. All right, 30% of people in a survey love chocolate. Now, that is a marginal distribution because we're talking about all people. We're not just talking about any specific group. That's marginal, all people. 30% of all people love chocolate. But if I look at the males, that now becomes conditional. The condition is you got to be a male. So 18% of the males love chocolate. Okay, interesting. And then if I change the condition to females, 63% of females love chocolate. This clearly shows that there is an association because being a female makes you more likely to like chocolate. 30% of all people like chocolate. The reason why I said that is because that's like the standard. We know that 30% of all human beings like chocolate. Well, I guess all people in this survey. I don't want to make an assumption. But all people in this survey, 30% like chocolate. But if I only look at the males, that number drops to 
So I don't know. I'm, I'm not, you know, a- asking you to answer this question, but obviously something about being a male makes me less likely to like chocolate. Who knows what it is? But 63% of the females are more likely to like chocolate, right? 63% of females love chocolate. So again, something about being a female, again, my job is not to really answer that question, but you know, who knows what it is, but something, clearly something about being a female makes me far more likely to like chocolate. So this is showing that gender is associated to liking chocolate or not. Because if I'm a male, I'm not as likely. If I'm a female, I'm much more likely. So this is an example of a clear association. And to see it, I needed conditional relative frequencies. All right, what would an example be of no association? Now, please, please, please keep in mind no association means that there is independence. Independence means that the two variables do not impact each other. Here's an example of no association. In a survey, the marginal distribution showed me that 43% of all students enjoy riding their bike for exercise. 43% of all kids like riding their bike to get exercise. However, if I look more specifically at high schoolers, I noticed that 43% of high schoolers enjoy riding their bike for exercise. And then if I look further conditional at middle school students, I found out that 43% of middle schoolers enjoy riding their bike for exercise. So what did I just find out? Well, I found out that there's no association. 43% of all students enjoy riding their bike for exercise. Yet 43% of high schoolers and 43% of middle schoolers like riding their bike too. So if I'm a high schooler or if I'm a middle schooler, it doesn't make me more likely to like riding my bike or less likely. It's 43% no matter what. This means that my age, high school or middle school, has no impact on if I like to ride my bike or not. 43% of kids like to ride their bike. Whether I'm in high school or whether I'm in middle school is not going to make that number go up or down. So I see the same proportion across the board. So this literally means that there is no association. Being a high schooler or middle school has no impact on liking to ride my bike or not liking to ride my bike. It's the same no matter what. So this is an example of where we see no association because we're seeing the same proportion across the board. Your um, category, high school, middle school, does not impact if you like to ride a bike or not. So being able to find conditional probabilities or conditional proportions, relative frequencies, right? They're all the same thing. Proportion, percentages, probabilities, they're all the same. Being able to find these is really going to help us answer this huge question about is there an association? So let's end it this way. Is there an association? This is very, very, very common question. Guarantee you're going to get this question on multiple worksheets, multiple quizzes, multiple tests. And you can never just say yes or no. You got to prove it. And to prove it, you need to explain your reasoning with conditional relative frequencies. Literally like I just did right here. So if I was asked the question, is whether you're a middle school or high school student, is that associated to riding your bike? I would say no. Why? Because 43% of kids like to ride their bike and 43% of middle schoolers like to ride the bike. And guess what? 43% of high schoolers like to ride their bike. I guess being in high school or middle school does not impact if I want to ride my bike or not. Same thing up here. Is there an association between gender and liking chocolate? Oh, yes, there is. 30% of people like chocolate. But if I'm a male, it drops down to 18%. If I'm a female, it goes up to 63%. So apparently gender does impact if you like chocolate or not. All right, let's put this to the test. Let's see if you could do this with the question. So if you want to hit pause right now and try this problem out, feel free. If you want to just watch me do it, then great. All right, so eye color, gender, are they associated? So the other cool thing about this is you don't have to find every single conditional um, proportion across the whole board. You only need to find one that proves your point. So for example, maybe I'm going to focus on, um, let's just say green, right? So I'd say, okay, what is the proportion of people with green that, you know, that have green eyes? So I'd say, what proportion have green, right? So P for proportion, what proportion have green? So 35 people have green out of 167. So I'm going to go grab my calculator. 
35 out of 167 is 0.21. So 21% of people have green eyes. Now, does that change if I'm a male? So now I'm going to look at the male. So I'm still going to look, I'm still going to focus on having green eyes, but now I'm going to give a condition that you are a male. So now, you know, this is kind of like saying, hey, on the bottom, you got to be a male, right? So I got to look at the people that are males. So how many people are males? Well, 82 are males. And on top, I'm still looking for green, right? I'm still focusing on the color green. I don't try to get too much confused here. And of those 82 males, 20 have green eyes. 20 out of 82 is 24%, percent point. Two, four. And I'm going to do it one more time. This time I'm still going to focus on green, but now I'm going to look at the condition that you are female. So again, this is going to change my denominator of the 85 females and 15 of them have green eyes. 15 out of 85 is about 18%, percent point one eight. So because I'm not seeing the same proportions across the board, this means there is an association. Now, I didn't look at any other color and that's okay. To be honest, if you find one category that shows there's, there is an association, then there is an association. So I would end this by saying, all right, there is an association between gender and eye color. For example, 21% of all people have green eyes. However, if I'm a male, 24% or of the males, 24% have green eyes. Of the females, 18%. So clearly, if you're a male, you were, for whatever reason, more likely to have green eyes. If you were a female, for whatever reason, you were less likely to have green eyes. So there is an association. Now, I picked green. You could have picked any other color to try to show this. And that is simply how you look for an association or not. But just make sure you give a nice, rich answer with lots of numbers to prove your point, right? Just like I did. And you don't have to give 20 different numbers to prove your point. Pick a category and then run with it. Like I picked green. You could have picked brown eyes or gray eyes. I mean, it's whatever you want, but pick it, find the values, and then make a decision based on what you see about if there's association. We're going to practice this so much in class because I know from experience that just doing one example is not going to prove to you guys or it's not going to make you an expert in this. But we do need to slowly become an expert in identifying associations or not. And we will do that as the uh, days go on with a lot of practice. All right, that's it for this video. See you guys in the next video.